So an issue that I've seen a lot of people ask about online and an issue that I actually ran into myself and tried to look for a solution online is um, the child of bone constraint for Blender. And the issue with this is that the set inverse and clear inverse kind of things that uh, are built into that constraint don't actually account for the transformation of the object in local space. So there's these issues where you can't toggle the box because it doesn't exist specifically for this constraint to affect transform. And that is something that usually helps with other constraints like limit location and rotation and stuff like that. So you can actually affect the little transform stuff up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take all these keyframes. I'm going to select all the bones. I'm going to take all the keyframes between our start and end of the animation, and I am going to delete them. So now we just have a fresh start and we can kind of look at what's going on here. So it's not going to be moving at all between these keyframes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to about a third of the way through the animation. And then I am going to rotate at the root bone. And this is just to further emphasize what's going on. So I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to key that uh, location using location and rotation. And I'm going to copy that into uh, just past the second third of the animation. So it should run the animation, lift the weapon, keep it in place, and then put it back down. So what we're going to do is we are going to take out the magazine and put another one in, uh, starting at the end of the first third of the animation and then ending at the second third of the animation. So what's going to happen is we're going to put it up and then let's take the magazine and let's actually key the influences at every position here. So the influence is keyed at one here. We're going to key it at one here as well. Uh, key it at the end of the second third. And I believe it is already keyed at the end. Good. So uh, we get to here and then we want to actually move our magazine. But if we move it now, it's still going to be parented to the object because the influence is still set to one. So any amount of movement that the weapon is going to make, that magazine is going to make, and that can look really bad when the magazine is being pulled out and kind of moved in an arc outside of the frame of the camera because then it will move in a kind of uh, highly unnatural winding motion because it's taken into account the movements of the root bone. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the very next frame. And if we wanted to, we can start another keyframe here. And let's just take that and let's turn the influence down to zero and see what happens. So we're taking it and we're turning the influence down to zero. And since it is no longer considering it parented to that object, uh, what it's doing is it's moving it to the location that we have in the transform sheet up here. So the X, Y, and Z locations of zero meters, that's where I moved it directly to the center of the uh, project. So we don't want that. What we want it to do is uh, when it gets to this frame, we want it to stay where it is, but we want it to no longer be parent to the object. So we're going to take it, we're going to move to that position, and then instead of just keying the actual location rotation, we're going to take the visual location rotation. So we're taking it in reference in uh, world space uh, related to the view. It doesn't really matter. It is the visual location rotation, but it's not really in reference to the view, it's in reference to like the position in world space. So if I do that now and I go back to the keyframe and the influence is still at one, you're gonna see that it's crazy way over here. And uh, well, I should have keyed the position of the actual normal magazine first, but I can just copy that from the first frame. So I'm gonna duplicate that, move it over here. And you see the magazine is normal up until we get to this frame and it just moves into a weird position because we are actually getting the position of that object still in world space corresponding to where we had saved it when it was rotating before. So what is essentially happening is we are getting double the uh, influence of this you know, animation here. If it was already attached to the weapon, it would be lifted up here. It would be lifted up, moved to the right. And since we save that location and it's still performing that child of kind of function, it is moving up and to the right again. So it's doubled that uh, kind of procedure. Now, if we go to the actual bone and we see that the influence is still one here, now that we save that position and we get rid of the influence and bring it down to zero, it's exactly where we want it. And we can keyframe that. So now we have the object going here and then being stuck here. And it is at an influence of one and it's in the right position. Then it's at an influence of zero and it's still at the right position. 
What I've seen a lot of people say online to do is to try and move it into the position the best you can, but this is a much better solution for it. So you just keyframe the visual location and rotation. And then now we have that bone there. And if we keep going, uh, it's gonna move to that other position. And the reason it's doing that is because the influence is slowly moving to one here because we keyframed it at that position. So what we can actually do here is take uh, the summary keyframe here at the very top. It's in brown on mine, but it could be a different color on yours. At the very top of the chart of on the dope sheet of your um, keyframes, that takes everything at that keyframe related to the bone. I have it specifically set up that it only shows the magazine right now. It's showing whatever I click on. But if I have everything related to the magazine, that includes the influences. So if I take here where the influence is keyed at zero and it has the position, what I can do is I could take that, uh, duplicate it, and move it to just a frame before we uh, start adding the influence on again. So it should stay in the same position as I go across. So basically, lift the weapon. We get to this point. We have the magazine at full influence. We go to the next frame. We key the position in the visual style. So press I, visual location rotation. Then we lower the influence to zero. We can duplicate this all the way to the end here. And then we duplicate the first one and put it after that. So you could do whatever you want with the magazine in this empty space, and it will no longer be affected by the um, uh, root bone. So I can take the magazine, and let's just go a third of the way into this chunk, uh, or let's just go exactly halfway through. Not ha not exactly, but I'll just you know eyeball it. I'll grab this, and I will take it out, bring it all the way down here, and let's just rotate it, I guess. And then if I press I and keyframe it, it does. we don't have to do the visual location rotation anymore. It doesn't really matter. These are essentially going to do the same thing now that there's zero influence on there. So I'll press I to location rotation, and it should leave the magazine position and the snap back perfectly in time for it to regain its influence. So if I press play, there you go. The magazine leaves the position and then comes back to it in the exact same position. You don't have to eyeball it. You don't have to try and move the bone as back into the position as you possibly can and then frame it and hope nobody notices. You can have the exact perfect location in world space of where the magazine needs to be before it gets that influence back. Influence here is zero. Influence is gained back to one. So if we go further on, it returns back to the position. It has the influence again. So in between the spot, you could do anything you want to the magazine and it will not be influenced by the gun. You could twirl the magazine in your hands, do a wacky reload. You can move the gun around as much as you want. See, that magazine is not following it. But if I go back here before we change the influence, it is following it. And that's exactly what we want. Um, so I think this is a very simple, very easy to understand, intuitive way of making this work. And it's not, I wouldn't even call it a workaround. I think it just, this is how it should be done. Um, if this helped you, please comment below. Let me know uh, what you were doing before, maybe uh, where you got the information. Because I, I watched a weapon animation video, and that's the one that told me just try and eyeball it. And I thought to myself, there has to be a better way to do this. And there was. So uh, let me know if this helped. Let me know if you have any issues or something you want me to elaborate on concerning this. I can get back to you in the comments or in a private message. And uh, good luck animating. Good luck making your games out there. Have a nice day. See ya.